Good morning. Today is Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. There's something important happening in Israel today amidst all the bad news, something that is deeply inspiring and in a less dramatic form, it holds an important lesson for every single one of us. So I want to start with an interview Daniel Gordas recently did with Professor Danny Brom. Dr. Brom is one of Israel's foremost experts on trauma. He's a clinical psychologist. He founded the Israel Center for the Treatment of Psychotrauma. It's in Herzog Hospital in Jerusalem. It's known in Hebrew as Metiv. And this center has helped thousands of people, including many veterans, who otherwise might not have been able to live the functioning lives that they do. So he was interviewed by Daniel Gordas, and he made some very, very important comments. First, he spoke about soldiers who have been in Gaza in active combat for two or three months straight, and now they're starting to get time off. They're starting to come home. And they come back into society and they look at the world and they say, wow, the world is still going on? Because what they've seen and experienced and what they've done is just horrific. And they have to understand, how do I make this transition? So Dr. Brahm says that he and his center received a lot of requests from combat teams who are now in Gaza and they're coming out within the next couple of weeks. And they say, can you do a workshop for us to help us understand how to see the world once we come home? How do we treat our children? How do we meet with our wives? And we have no idea of what to do, so please come, come help us. And what these soldiers are saying is... You know, when I come home, I don't understand this world. I feel like I come from a different planet. And that's, that's the words that many of these soldiers use. It's like I'm from a different planet. So, Dr. Brahm says, we have to put that somewhere and process it and create a story about what this is. Now, there are many different stories. One story that people are telling is, oh, this is the Holocaust. And we've heard this over and over and over again. This is the Holocaust. But Dr. Brahm says that's a very hard story to tell, and it may not be the best story. So he tells this anecdote. He says, about, he says I heard about a, an army team that came out of Gaza, and one of the members of this army unit they knew a Holocaust survivor, and they said, let's go there and talk to this person. Before they went home, they went to talk to this Holocaust survivor, and they went to this elderly man, and they said to him, is this the Holocaust? And he said to them, listen, guys, this is not the Holocaust. We're in a very, very different place now. We have an army. We can hit back. We're not in the same position. Yes, they've done some atrocities, some horrific things that were also done in the Holocaust, but this is not a Holocaust. And what Dr. Fromm says is that's a really important story because we have to be very careful not to put the wrong label on it because the wrong label leads you to a different position because the way that we process these things is by telling ourselves a story, by telling each other a story. And if we tell ourselves the wrong story, we could end up in a very dark place. And Dr. Brahm says, one of the things that we should not forget is besides all the horrible things that are happening and are, that have happened and are still happening, there is an enormous amount of good stuff good energy that is coming out of people in Israel today. And I will give several examples of that in just a moment. But he explains, and, and it's um, ironic that it's coming from him, Dr. Fromm, the expert on trauma. 
He says, starting on the October 7th, there was a sort of frenzy in Israel saying, everyone needs treatment. Everyone is suffering from trauma. I remember I said that line, I was quoting somebody else. Everyone is suffering from trauma. And Dr. Fromm says, I became very worried when I heard that because he sa I said to myself, that's, no, hold on, that's not true. That's not reality. It is true that about 10 to 15% of people who experience these terrible things will have actual trauma and they will need specific treatment. And that is 10 to 15% is a huge, huge number. But that is not Israeli society. And so he was in a position of saying he's the expert on trauma and trauma therapy, but he had to say, hold on for a second. It is not correct that everyone has trauma and that what everyone needs is treatment for trauma. So let's think about what is it that we do need? What do we actually need as an Israeli society? And he says what we need is to find ways to create resilient communities. Communities with fortitude. Communities where there are collaborations that allow people to strengthen each other. Communities where there are connections. And this is a new way of thinking about resilience in terms of the activities of culture and other types of activities within a community that brings people together. So we created, he says, a very comprehensive program that we're now going to pilot in a number of cities in order to see how we can hold each other because that's what's needed. After trauma, you don't need a therapist. Most people do not need a therapist. You need people in your environment to hold you and to get through it with you and to build stories, like in communities, where people can build their stories and tell each other and listen to each other and not necessarily just cry out for therapy, because that's not what most people need. Dr. Fromm told this story. He said, I had a friend coming from New York who said, this is a very different energy. There's always this frenzy energy in Israel, which is sort of attractive, but at this moment, he's speaking about recently, it, there's sort of a depressed energy. People not knowing, where is this going? Who knows? Who's telling us? So it's frightening. But Dr. Fromm says, but we can do things. We can really bring people together. And that is, at the end of the day, what people need during and after trauma. In other words, most of us don't need treatment. We need resilience and connection with each other. So, again, it's ironic, Dr. Brahm, who started Mativ, who's one of the leaders of treating PTSD, is now urging Israeli society, don't jump into thinking that this entire society has PTSD. Think of this as a society that has to cultivate the skills of resilience and connection. Yes, there will always be individual people who will need therapy. And of course, Mativ and other organizations and professionals will be there to provide that. But to help a country so to speak, and the same is true in a less dramatic way for a community, recognize it doesn't need therapy. It just needs to heal. And we can heal together. So I want to share with you very briefly just three examples. Just three examples that I've learned about in the last couple of days. There is a colorful clown that has been ubiquitous and intriguing at all sorts of Israeli demonstrations in recent years. 
Now, she calls herself Hashuteret Hashoteret Az Ulai. Now, Hashoteret means the policewoman. Policewoman. Azulai, of course, is a very common Jewish uh, name for people who come from Moroccan descent. Azulai. But she spells it Az Ulai. And she means by that to refer to the phrase Az Ulai Yia Yotetov. Then maybe it will be better. And what she does is she comes as a policewoman over the past four years, dressed up in costume, and she does all kinds of crazy things. She hands out star little heart stickers to all the soldiers, all kinds of crazy things. And she does it for protesters of all stripes. She's been at protests against the government, protests in favor of the government, protests against Haredim, protests in favor of Haredim, protests against the Palestinians' programs, protests in favor of civil rights of, of, uh, of uh, the Arabs living in Israel, um, all types. She's, she's, she goes everywhere. And what sets her apart from others at these demonstrations is her efforts to build relationships. Relationships among the protesters, whoever they may be, and relationships with the police officers, many of whom by now know her quite well. In one encounter, this was on a clip that was shown on TV, she can be seen trying to restrain a police officer. Come down, Nishama, come down, come, calm down, calm down. We're in this together. Take a deep breath. Calm down. Now, the tricks that she does sometimes bring smiles to the faces of the policemen, and sometimes they lead to her being arrested for obstructing disorderly contact and detained for a weekend Jerusalem jail. Okay. But what she's doing is she's bringing hugs and humor and togetherness to Israelis across every spectrum. She is one of these amazing people who is helping us to heal. Another example. So, since October 7th, more and more Israeli women are giving birth while their partner is on the front lines or, nebuch, God forbid, worse, killed in action. So, midwives are volunteering to help them with far more than just breathing exercises and getting through the birth, which is their traditional role. When the Israel mobilized the day after, on, on October 7th, in response to the massacre of Hamas, one group that has played and is still playing a pivotal role, if not so well known in Israeli society, is Israeli midwives. So Yifat Hadar Rubenenko is the chairwoman of the Israel Midwives Association. And she says, we decided as an organization, as a group, we wanted to be there for the women. And they started by opening a hotline and asking midwives to volunteer to answer questions. They also started a Facebook group that now has over 10,000 members. We increased the number of midwives who respond to queries because there, were, there was a very dramatic rise in women who joined it. And the sorts of questions started to center around anxiety. And we saw its amazing power. It really saves lives. When there are missiles outside and you don't know if you should go to the hospital. So this way, you have a midwife to consult with in the group who you can ask anonymously 24-7 and be able to know what to do. They have a program where they partnered with the Defense Ministry and the Israel Defense Forces Widows and Orphans Organizations to help care for the pregnant women who were widowed, Nebuch, during the war and the pregnant partners of wounded soldiers. And as part of that project, each woman is assigned two midwives, available to her at all times. They meet frequently with her, accompany her through 
the delivery, visit her in the ha- hospital a- afterwards. Rubenenko says, we want to roll out the red carpet for these women. It's not like she's coming in and saying, okay, my husband isn't here and I'm traumatized and I can't look at blood. We want to make it so that when these women are in the delivery room, they won't have another traumatic experience. They will have a midwife with her to answer any question and to try to alleviate any anxiety. One last example. But there are so, so many more. One last example. So, as you know, one very, very serious thing that's been going on um, since near the start of this war is that tens of thousands, maybe over 100,000 people from the area around Gaza have been displaced. Israeli citizens have been displaced to other places because where they live is too dangerous. And a few weeks after that, tens of thousands, maybe over 100,000 people living in the north on the border with Lebanon have been evacuated. So you have, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's over 200,000 people, 200,000 Israelis who were evacuated from their homes. Many of them are living in hotels temporarily. And believe me, it's no vacation. You have very often a whole family in one or two rooms. There's no privacy. You're away from your family, your friends, your community. And most of all, you have nothing to do all day. You have nothing to do all day except worry and be upset at your situation. So, here's an initiative that was created by the Asif Culinary Institute of Israel. That's an organization based in Tel Aviv, Culinary Institute. And what they decided to do is to try to create pairings, putting together displaced families from the north or the south, together with host families in Tel Aviv that have kitchens. Because for these families in hotels, among the things they don't have to do is cook. And they don't have kitchens. So for people who are cooking and providing for their family and enjoying meals together was, was and hopefully will be an important part of their lives, it's gone. So this organization, Asif Culinary Institute of Israel, has this initiative where it pairs families together with Tel Aviv families, and the family that's staying in a hotel with no kitchen, they come to the family, they meet them, and they get to cook the meal for themselves and their host family. And they get to be in the kitchen, and they get to be providing and making food together. Asif, this organization, has paired more than 40 displaced Israelis with host kitchens around Tel Aviv in the past two months. That's according to the, the, the director of this organization, Shai Lee Hirsch. That's, that's the name. So Hirsch said, these matchups give people who are in a hotel room without a kitchen and whose hands are yearning to touch food a chance to feel a home away from home. And the project has had the ancillary effect of bringing together Israelis from opposite sides of the country's increasingly polarized political landscape. For example, you have a family from the northern border, a right-wing family, and now they're displaced. They're in Tel Aviv, very secular. They get paired with a secular left-wing kind of a family. And before the outbreak of the war, they were let's say, on opposite sides of the political spectrum. Uh, They may have argued with each other had they met each other, and now they're being brought together and they're meeting each other and they're helping each other and they're creating connection between each other. Hearst said, it's the most heartening thing right now that we have the possibility to create connections through food. That's our mission. And connection is the key. Now, we started talking about this and doing it at the beginning of COVID. But for every one of us going through difficulty or challenge, yes, some of us 
need treatment. Medical treatment, psychological treatment, other kinds of professional help, yes. But most of us just need connection. Israelis today are demonstrating their genius for creating it in new and innovative ways, giving all of us tools we can use in our lives. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.